So I've got another question. The question is from Spamandla Masomboka. So Spamandla has an interesting question. So he's, have, he's given us a few questions and I'm just going to um, try answer some of them. So he's given us SO4. They've given us a reaction. There's nothing above that. doesn't tell us anything other than this. So there's no story. And there's these two lines. It is an equilibrium. SO, I think it's a three. I'm not really sure. Let me see. It must be a three then. I'm, I really can't see very properly. Delta H is called ne negative nine, two kilojoules. Let's just see. This is six. That is eight. That is six. So that must be maybe a four. So that can give me... That's a five, then, just to balance it out. So I've got 10 O's. I've got 4 times 2 is 8, plus 2 is 10. So I've got 10, 10. I've got 2 S's. I've got 2 S's. Okay, that's balanced. I hope I'm saying this correctly. But now it says the contact process gets its name from the contact stuff and whatever. So remember, we've done contact processes and stuff. So now they are referring back to this contact process. Remember, you get the harbor process, con contact process, and the austral process. And all of them are based on chemical equilibrium. They work, they work on a lot of chemistry and basically everything that we're doing here. And let me just share some information with you guys, and this is why. When companies are trying to produce ammonia or sulfuric acid, they don't want to lose a drop of anything. And remember, the products that we have in our homes always taste the same. Did you ever think about why does some of the cool drink that we eat always taste the same, right? This is because they use precise measurements of things or systems in equilibrium that must always work with each other. That's why you will always or we always get the same product. So the contact process is one of them. So this is the equation that we have. The first question says, define the term catalyst. Now, we've done that before we went to the ad break. Let's just go through it. A catalyst is a substance that makes or speeds up the reaction rate without taking part. And how does it do this? By lowering the activation energy. Just want to take you back to our previous slides. When we were given the exothermic and endothermic reaction, we said this dotted line is an indication that a catalyst was used. Because if the, originally the activation energy was all the way up here, but using a catalyst or putting in a catalyst. Now they use either platinum, vanadium or whatever, depending on the reaction that's taking place. Um, you're gonna get a line that is a little bit less uh, down here. So this line with a small arch shows that a catalyst was used. Remember what I said, scientists are lazy individuals, they don't like writing, so they wanna draw everything on one picture. So just by me looking at that, you should already see or know that a catalyst was then used. So back to, Spamanda's question. So Spamanda, we've already talked about uh, a catalyst. And then the second question is, define the term dynamic equilibrium. Remember, we've already spoken about that, where the forward and reverse reaction are on the same rate, or occurring at the same rate. So the forward and the reverse reaction are together. So now, the next one I love. It says, write down only the words increase, decrease, or remain the same. This is important. Increase, decrease, or remains the same, remains the same. Now, something to elaborate on this, guys. If the question or the examiner say only write, and most of the time they write it in bold capital letters, only write increase, decrease, or remain the same, please don't go write a paragraph because that is negative marking and you don't want to lose marks. That's all they want to know. They want to know if you know that the system will increase, decrease, remain the same, you know, and so forth. And unfortunately, before you can get to know that, you need to practice a lot. So with this equation, they need us to write increase, decrease, or remains the same for the following. The first one says um, SO4 is removed. I think let's just write the question. The temperature is decreased. Temperature, if the temperature is decreased, number C, the pressure is decreased. So the pressure of the system is decreased. Remember now, do not confuse pressure and volume as vice versa. I, I, even today, I have to use the balloon story in order for me to, to actually get it right. So those are our, those are our questions. So now, let me just use another color. So now, 
I want us to look at it like this, um, like how I always told you and how I tell my children, always put heat as a product. I can see that this is exothermic, exothermic. And if you've just joined us, Tobila, how do you know that this is exothermic? Because when delta H or heat enthalpy is less than zero, it's exothermic. It means that heat was a byproduct. If delta H is greater than zero, it's endothermic. It means that heat is required for that system to take place. And like I said, if you feel the container of such a reaction, it will feel so cold because it's preserving all the heat inside and not actually releasing any heat. So I would add my heat here as a product. Now remember, when you add your heat as a product, think about it as what will happen if I take it down and bring it up, in which way or direction will the system then shift and will it increase, decrease, or remain the same? So if I, rem if I remove, if I remove SO4, so I just spam those questions actually halfway. Oh, so what will happen to SO4? So our, our, our question here is SO4. What will happen to SO4? If I remove SO4, it will decrease because I am removing it, right? I am removing it. So the system will shift in such a way as to counter that. Now let's go back. If I was to decrease the temperature, if I'm taking down the temperature, if this is my temperature and I'm taking it down, think of it like this, I've got a system, now this side has so much heat and this side is like, oh my word, I need to also get some heat. The system is gonna shift in such a way as to decrease the heat. So if, I, if, the, if the heat is decreased, the system will shift in such a manner as to counter that. And if the temperature is decreased, the SO4 will also decrease. And why do I say this? Remember when we, in grade 10, we do the kinetic molecular theory. Remember that when things, have a, when, when things are at high temperature or particles are at high temperature, they've got enough energy to move around, bounce around and so forth. It's like an athlete who's warming up before 100 meter. They don't just on your market set and then they start running. No, they must warm up the blood and all that stuff and then they get into formation. So the particles do exactly the same thing. When you decrease the temperature, the collision between the particles is then affected. Now, what will happen if the pressure is decreased? So now remember, when we decrease the pressure, if, if you think of a balloon, you decrease the pressure by reducing the particles or the space between the molecules, you increase your volume. So if you decrease your pressure, making meaning the volume gets much, much smaller, we're gonna get more of this because it means more effective collision. Going back to the kinetic molecular theory, effective collision is going to be happening. So more and more will then be produced. It will then increase. It will then increase in this case. Okay, let me answer another question. Still on Spamanda's sheet. So he says, okay, here he's given us another graph. He's given us another graph here. And this is a solid line. This one goes down, it comes up. And then they've given us a dotted line. So this looks more or less like the other questions that we have done. And then here, there's a little arch. And the, this one says moles. I think I'm seeing it correctly. Mm, I think it says moles. And this one is time in seconds. So what is the solid? The first question says, let me write it here. It says, what does the solid line, solid line represent. What does a solid line represent? So I can't, I can't see most of the, the questions that are occurring here, but technically, being an educator, if I had to ask my learners, what does the solid line represent? I would give them an equation for one, so that they would be able to see something being formed. Is it two reactants forming a product, or is it a product being is dissociated into two reactants? That is actually very important. But just by looking at a solid line, guys, always remember, the solid line, this solid line moving down, remember what we said in the beginning of the show, you use your graph. Scientists are lazy, they draw everything. If we had to give now, this is a hypothetical Example, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. These are my moles and they start off at zero. The solid line means I am forming something. I start with my seven moles, they go down, they go down, they go down because I am using up my reactants and on the, 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 um, the broken line means I'm making something else on this side. So Spamandla, 
This broken line will then tell me this is a forward reaction. A forward reaction. And I can also add to that to say that reactants, reactants are being used up. Are being used up. The next question then says, what is the broken line? What is what is the broken line? Well, actually, proper English would be, what does the broken line represent? What does the broken line? What does the broken line represent? What does the broken line represent? Now, the same thing, just want to go back to this one here because it will give you a better understanding. The solid line here was the original. Solid line was the original reaction. The dotted line na, 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 was when we added a catalyst. So when we see broken lines in any part of, of, of physics or in put any part of chemistry to be more specific, it means it's something else that's happening at the same time. So when I have to go back to what we are doing now here, it means something else was being made. So the, this is a forward reaction. This could be a reverse reaction. This could be a reverse reaction. And I can also say a product. Product or products are being formed. Are being formed. And remember what I said. They can even take it a notch further to say, okay, um, how many moles were pumped into the system? You'll take your answer from there. Products that are made always starts at zero. And then the next question, uh, Pamanta's question says, why do these lines have a straight line? So here between this place and this place, if we had to give these values as well, remember what we said, if there is a straight line, we have equilibrium. We did these definitions in the beginning of the lesson. This is an equilibrium. So here and here, they were occur in the forward and the reverse reaction were equal between these times. And like I always said, teachers like spicing things up and they'll also ask you, between which two time frames did equilibrium occur? Now remember, you don't calculate it. If they've given you a graph, you go to your graph and you look at what matters. Now, just looking, just my mere looking at this graph, it could be a bit tricky. I wanna explain this again, six, seven. If this is at two and this is at seven, uh, we don't, we, you have to calculate as one, two, three, four, five, make sure that you don't read it um, incorrectly and so forth. So, yeah, that's technically Spamandla's question to me. We've answered the increase, the decrease, dynamic equilibrium. Guys, I hope you're picking up a common trend when you are doing uh, question papers, because I've already also picked up one. When we looked at Rachel Car Carabo's questions and so forth, they always ask you dynamic equilibrium, chemical equilibrium. Will it increase, will it decrease? Which side does the KC move and so forth? Now, just to go on a notch and explain this a little bit further, we are going to look at how KC is now then affected. So because I want us now to start moving for when we're calculating the KC value or calculating the moles. And I know most of us actually do kind of, we hate this table that we use and all that stuff, but I'm gonna make it pretty easy for you. But before I do that, I wanna give you guys some, a little bit of, of, of notes. So first things first, when we're doing the KC, you must always remember that we always have our products. You have your products over your reactants. You have your products over your reactants. And we only include substance, um, substances who, who's, um, who can change. So no solids, no liquid. We want consistency. But now something to remember. When we have KC greater than zero, we can also get KC as less than zero. Remember what we said, in a, in a reaction, we can have heat enthalpy, which is delta H, as greater than zero or less than zero. And what did this tell us? It told us it could either be exothermic or endothermic, meaning my products can have more energy than my reactants, or my reactants can have more energy than my products. And when we do calculations, that's very crucial. So when you're doing the KC, you already need to understand what does it mean when KC is greater than zero or when KC is less than zero. So if KC is greater than zero, the equilibrium lies to the left. Um, the equilibrium lies to the left. And what does this mean? Let me just, I'm gonna need a bit more space here. What does this mean? 
it means that more products, more products than reactants. And this is a reactance. This is actually a good thing. I mean, every industry wants this. You don't want to start buying ingredients to bake a cake or let's say cupcakes. You buy flour and eggs and whatever and you only produce one cupcake. No, no one wants that. We want an industry where all the ingredients to the last scrape, we can actually get something out of it. So when the KC is greater than zero, it's a thumbs up. Everyone is happy because we have more products than reactants. It's not a waste. But when we have the KC as being less than zero, then we know that the equilibrium, the equilibrium lies to the right. The equilibrium will lie to the right. What does this mean? This one is a bad one. More reactants, more reactants than products. Yeah, this is like, baking gone bad. This is one of those situations. So this is already what you need to understand because when you are calculating your KC value, this will come up. And this is where this information comes from. And another thing, when you are calculating KC, they will ask you, if the KC is less than zero, what does it mean? What does it imply? Or they can give you a scenario, situation. Uh, Tobile was calculating the KC and she got a KC of 0 0.9. Please help Tobile understand what does this mean? You know, it's like when you write a test, when somebody says, I've got a C plus, or I've got a C minus, and so forth, they actually mean something. They're not just symbols, they actually mean something. The same thing when we do KC. Now, uh, um, businesses, or let's say people who work in the chemical industry, they know, or they always want their KC to be up greater than zero, because that means more moolah, more product, and effective working. And one, another thing to remember with KC, it's temperature sensitive. It's temperature sensitive. What is something that temperature sensitive means? It means when you are working with KC, temperature must be kept constant. When we talk about KC and they, they bring in pressure and concentration, that does not really have much of an effect, but when we talk about temperature, it's very crucial. When we talk about temperature, remember, we can measure it in Kelvin or we can measure it in degrees Celsius. Now, another mistake, my darlings, you must make sure that you know how to convert between Kelvin and degrees and degrees Celsius. So make sure that you have that sorted out. And this is actually things that you actually learn in like grade 10 and so forth. So make sure that you have that. And then when we talk about um, the KC, there's one important guy that we must always remember. And I've seen it in Pamanda's question as well and in Rachel's one, but I'm deciding to do it now, is Le Chatelier. Le Chatelier. Now, I mean, everyone calls Le Chatelier something else. Principle. I went to, to an Afrikaans school and it was definitely not called Le Chatelier. And remember, when we talk about Le Chatelier, then we talk about if a system, if a system in equilibrium, if a system in equilibrium is subjected, subjected to a stress, now, the word stress is very important because remember, if we're having a system and the system is feeling stress, it needs to relieve the stress. So it needs to move in such a manner as to counter the stress, right? So you have to say stress. The equilibrium, the equilibrium will favor, will favor the so sometimes you can say it will, you, if you don't want to use the word favor, you can say it will, it, it will shift, but the equilibrium never moves. That is an automatic incorrect. It either favors, it either shifts, but it doesn't move, right? It will favor the reaction, will favor the reaction which tends, which tends to relief, which tend to relieve that stress. And this is then Le Chatelier's principle along with the KC. I think before we start moving into calculations and using the, the what did we start with, what did we use, and the KC.